Welcome back to Broken Electronics. I'm Lee, and I'm so glad you could take time out to join me today. Now, what are you joining me for? Well, we're going to start taking an in-depth look at the Mac Mini Collection. And we're going to start... Uh, uh, with the acrylic minis. I've got one, two, three, four, five of them here. There is one missing. We'll be getting to that. Uh, now, as far as the ones that we're going to take a more in-depth look at, this is the first and last of the PowerPC Mac Minis, the G4. Uh, they came in, in different different powers. Uh, you could argue that there were two different releases of them, but basically, this is it. Now, we've just seen this machine in depth quite recently, in fact, at the end of this past Marchintosh, so we can put that one aside. Similarly, the last of them, that would be the 2009 Server Edition. We took a look at this one fairly recently, too. So you can, if you have not seen that video, you can always go back and look at it. Uh, and that leaves us three. Now, of the three... If we look at them, you can see the one at the bottom looks different. These top two look absolutely identical, which is why I've labeled them. This one is the 1.5 gigahertz Intel Core Solo, the first and lowest spec uh, Mac Mini of the Intel era. All right. In here... We have the 2 gigahertz Intel Core 2 Duo. And here, finally, the late 2009 uh, 2.26 gigahertz Intel Core 2 Duo. All right. These are machines we're going to be taking, uh, taking a more in-depth look at. We did look at this one here. That's the uh, 2007 uh, Intel Core 2 Duo pretty recently, but we're going to take another look at it for reasons. <laughs> All right, put those two aside. <clears throat> I'm going to start out with the Intel Core Solo, and I'll admit, when I first got this, I didn't know much about it. I plugged it in, finally got it to run. There's a whole story about that. But anyhow, once I finally got the right power brick for it and got it running, and looking about this Mac, and so the Intel Core Solo, I honestly thought, what the heck is that? I was very familiar with the Core 2 Duos. Uh, all right, what is a Core Solo? One of Intel's last 32-bit processors, and therein lies the difference. Uh, the missing Mac Mini that we spoke about also came out in 2006 and continued past the point that the Core Solo was dropped was the Intel Core Duo, not to be confused with the Core 2 Duo. The Core 2 Duo is a legitimate 64-bit processor. The Core Duo and the Core Solo are 32-bit, which of course limits them quite a bit. Uh, this particular machine has all of 512 megabytes of RAM, that's what it originally shipped with, so this is pretty representative of uh, what you would get when you first bought your first Intel Mac Mini. So, why don't we start out by taking a look at that and then the other two machines uh, in succession and figure out where we're going to go from here as far as these machines and what we might look at in the near future. And if you are interested in seeing where this leads, Please stay tuned. This machine has a funny trick. Uh, as soon as I plug in the power brick, it turns itself on. That may be something about the power button. I don't know. But anyway, it's on. We're, we are connected here to the 23-inch uh, Apple Cinema Display HD.
not exactly a speed demon, is it? Well, it is uh, an 18-year-old computer at this point, I guess. Is that right? Oh, uh, PRAM battery's dead. Okay. What about this Mac? This is running Leopard 10.5.8. There's the 1.5 gigahertz Intel Core Solo, <clears throat> a 32-bit processor. Uh, I, I know Apple was cutting corners with this machine. It was They were trying to make it as cheaply as possible. I, I still am a little surprised they, they released the Core Solo version of this. This would appear to be the absolute baseline. It shipped with 512 megabytes. Looking here in System Profiler, uh, Mac Mini 1, 1, Intel Core Solo. Uh, this is telling us all of the information. Uh, it's curious. Oh, it does have Bluetooth. I was not aware of that. And it does have Airport. Okay, which is not on right now. I, I have it plugged in. No real reason to, but I've got it plugged in with... Uh, Ethernet. Okay. 55.89. That, that would translate in modern terms to a 60 gigabyte hard drive. That's what was shipped. Give. Give. Hmm. It's almost so much that this is telling me. Give me a moment here to look this up. I shall be right back. Stay tuned. Okay, yes, I, I looked up the model number here. It's a Seagate uh, 60 gigabyte drive with the 5400 rotational rate. It's a it's a slow drive, but exactly what ships. So yeah, this this machine would appear to be pretty much stock. Now I haven't had this up and running in a while. Well, okay, it's got uh, iLife, it's got iWork09, iDVD, Office 2008. So, yeah, I put some things on it. Uh, and that's me, so yeah, yeah. This is, this is not an absolutely stock installation. But there is something interesting. Uh, this was not true of the... Power PC versions, but these Intels shipped with remote controls, <laughs> and the whole purpose of, of the remote control, I, th I think they had figured out that people were actually hooking them up to their entertainment systems, and they had put in front row, and you can use the remote to navigate through front row. theatrical trailers. There's nothing in there. Uh, so, uh, how do I get out of this? Yeah, okay. Uh, just sort of an interesting thing. And uh, uh, an interesting aside, whenever I do play around with this remote with one of these Mac Minis, my Apple TV in here responds to it. It kicks on and uh, it's telling right now there is no software to execute because, of course, the Apple TV doesn't have front row in it. But it's interesting because I, I can remember picking up various Mac Minis through the years uh, and they would keep coming to these remotes. And why the heck do you want a remote with this thing? But interestingly, to, to this day, I I connect Mac Minis as part of my, my entertainment systems. Uh, I've got, say, 2018 Mac Mini downstairs in the big setup. Uh, 2014 Mini is is uh, connected up here, so I do it. Now, I, I use a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse with it rather than a remote, but interesting thing. 
Okay. Where are we going to go from here? Let's look back at our basic specs. All right, upgrade paths. You can certainly upgrade the RAM. It will take, I think, up to one gigabyte of RAM, maybe two, but I think just one. It's a 32-bit uh, processor. Uh, you can certainly upgrade the storage. You could put an SSD in here with an adapter easily enough. Uh, and I may eventually do that uh, just because one of these days I've got to crack into this thing and replace that PRAM battery. And if I'm going to do that, I might as well do the others. At which point, if you get it up to at least one gigabyte of RAM, you can run Snow Leopard, which might be an interesting thing. It is possible, the, the processor on these machines is on a daughter card, and it is possible, although awkward, to upgrade that. Uh, you could put in a Core 2 Duo. I honestly don't see the point, because if you do that, then it becomes this machine, the actual Core 2 Duo. Mechanically, there's very little difference between the two, uh, except for the processor. So, why are you bothering? In the short run, I, I think I'm going to look at this as being a period piece. Leave the Core Solo processor exactly as it is. Probably leave the RAM, leave the stock hard drive. Maybe get rid of the Leopard installation and put on Tiger because this thing shipped with Tiger. In fact, I think shipped with the 10.4.5. The retail discs I've got are 10.4.6. Uh, that would be the most interesting use of this machine right now uh, and would take the, the least amount of time. Okay, so we're going to uh, shut this down, disconnect it, and let's take a quick look at the Core 2 Duo from 2007. Stay tuned. Yep, this one did it too. As soon as I plugged it in, I did not touch the power button. I just plugged it in, and a couple seconds later, bang, it's up and running. All right. Seems a little snappier. And this, this was um, put together by the seller, so maybe not, okay. Uh, we'll cancel out of, uh, ah, <laughs> pure and battery again. Oh, uh, yeah, no, I may be thinking of a different machine. Okay, about this Mac. 10.5.8, 2 gigahertz Intel Core 2 Duo, which would make it late 2007, 2 gigabytes of memory, hmm, that's interesting. All right, any more info? Okay. It's got the same Bluetooth. Same airport card? Yeah, it's the same machine. Okay, this has got a Hitachi drive. Uh, it's 120 gig uh, as opposed to the 60. Uh, I'm willing to bet it's the same rotational rate. I'd, I'd have to look it up to be sure. Uh, but at least it's twice as big. So yeah, basically it's it's the same machine. Uh, now it came out in late 2007, so it would, I believe, most likely have shipped with Leopard. Uh, have I done any customizing to this? Yeah, I work 08. iWeb, iTunes, 
iPhoto, there's GarageBand, so it's got the whole uh, iLife suite. I obviously didn't bother with uh, Office. All right. Opening front row again. All right, and here's our remote. Works exactly the same way. Interesting. Okay. No, that's not what I want. All right. So we, we can say the same thing uh, in, in, in terms of upgrade path. Uh, yeah, you can upgrade RAM. Uh, it's got two gigabytes, which I believe is what it shipped with. Uh, it You can put four in there. Oh, I think you've got to update it to Lion to get it to actually use all four. It would only use three as it is. Uh, we'll see. Um, the two, however, would be plenty. And, you know, I'm, I'm thinking with this, since I've got a zillion machines kicking around that run Leopard, this might be the interesting machine to put Snow Leopard on. You know, let this run Snow Leopard, uh, and then the Core Solo can can run Tiger, and then they they both pretty much become period pieces. Uh, this would would have an upgraded operating system, but an interesting thought. And as far as opening it up, well, you know, you'd have to open it up at some point. The same exact thing at some point. I'm, I'm going to need to to get at that PRAM battery. Uh, and when I do that, I might as well put in the 4 gig of RAM. I might as well put in an SSD uh, just to get it to run a little bit faster. But yeah, basically, both of, both of these two, in terms of collection uh, pieces, are period pieces. I'd, I'd like to have a decent running mini running Snow Leopard. I think that would be pretty cool. All right. Let's move on then to the last in this particular installment, the late 2009 Core 2 Duo. Stay tuned. Okay, I'm looking at this for a second. Having plugged in the power supply, I notice that it is not turning itself on. So, pressing the power button. Novel concept, huh? All right, now this one, this is a fairly recent purchase. In fact, I think I did do a video on it, but I did want to take a look at it in this anyway. Uh, so you can see it's running much more quickly. Uh, it is seller uh, upgraded. Uh, all right. And you can tell the subtle difference uh, in the... Uh, snow leopard wallpaper and the fact that the colors are pop out at you a little bit more i don't know if the camera's going to show that or not that's a snow leopard uh thing all right and the seller did do some upgrading to this it's got the 2.26 gigahertz intel core 2 duo it is a late 2009 uh this was the the lower end processor uh, he has upgraded it to 8 gigabytes of 1333 megahertz DDR3, which is handy. That's that's the most you can put in there. And if we look here at more info. Bluetooth is updated a bit over the 2006 and 2007. Interestingly, airport airport connected automatically, didn't it? Yep, son of a gun. Okay, all right. Okay. Yeah, it's a two hundred and fifty gigabyte uh, SSD. Uh, which, which is nice. He's put in that. It's one of the reasons why this machine runs as 
snappily as it does. Um, and it appears that the PRAM battery actually functions, so we probably changed that too. Oh, that's good. I, I don't really need to dig into this. I mean, I suppose I would want to put in a somewhat bigger SSD than this, but no absolute need to at this point. Okay. And I think, oh. Finder preferences. I'm just so used to having the hard disk show on the desktop. That used to be the default. I always set that. Okay. Oh, it's got Firefox on here. <coughs> That's interesting. Uh, and it does have iLife. Does not have iWorks on it. Interesting. Front row continued certainly into uh, and the remote still works. <laughs> How cool is that? All right, now where to go this machine? This machine is actually positioned somewhat differently than the others in that it has an SSD. It it is fully 64 bit. Uh, it has eight gigabytes of RAM. Uh, it will run up to El Capitan natively. Through the use of the DOS Dude One patchers, you could get it up to Catalina, and it it would run Catalina pretty reasonably. And as memory serves, I'll have to check it out more carefully. Uh, it's supported at least up to a point by OCLP. So it might be an interesting project with this machine just to see how far, how close to the modern day you can actually get it. And it's running very, very snappily right now. Uh, well, all right. Uh, yeah, I think so. We've got we've got some projects ahead of us. It'll be setting the the 2006 core solo, uh, reverting it back to the original operating system Tiger, and leaving it as a period piece. Uh, putting Snow Leopard on the uh, 2007 core two duo, and then with this machine. Let's maybe have a look where we can actually bring it. That would be interesting. Okay, so that I think is the end of our look here at the <coughs> the acrylic Mac minis. Uh, be good to other people. They need it and deserve it. Be good to yourselves. We can do a lot of good in this world, but we have to start by being good to ourselves, to position ourselves to do that good. We can make the world a better place. It isn't yet. So please take very, very good and careful care. Um, so we have those Mac Mini uh, projects to come back to. We do have to next, in this overview, uh, start taking a look at the aluminum Mac Minis from 2010, uh, really to the present, because the, the case has stayed the same even here into the uh, Apple Silicon era. All right, we won't in this series be going any further than 2018 Mini, but that's it is. And of course, there's a ton of other things. I've got so much going on there. There's more Power PC things, of course. A lot more Mac Pro material coming up. Uh, but until those things are up and available on the channel, this has been Broken Electronics. <laughs>